presentation uh, is just designed to give you a look at the uh, Centec Plus logging and data transmission option, uh, just an introduction to it uh, for those who uh, aren't familiar with it or just need a refresher. Um, a lot of uh, the people online have probably already used EnviroScan Plus, but um, uh, hopefully uh, this can still give them something. Uh, Centec Plus is simply put another method of getting Centex continuous soil moisture sensor data into the user's computer. The Centex Plus solution stores readings in temporarily in two places before it reaches the user's PC. Uh, those two places are the RS232 probe interface, where it can store up to 2,000 readings. So uh, when we say 2,000 readings, that's uh, one per sample, uh, not uh, it's not really relevant how many sensors you've got on there. Um, and then those readings will stay there until a successful upload is done to FTP server. So that's the second place that the data is stored. So uh, they go from the probe interface to the server. And then uh, when that happens, when it's successful, the readings will be deleted from the probe interface. Uh, if you if for any reason the upload fails, the readings will stay on the interface uh, and then uh, they can be manually downloaded. Um, and when you manually download, like with a cable through the front panel or through the probe interface, the readings stay on there. Okay, so I've just switched it to full screen mode. And uh, we'll just start with a sort of overview of how the PLUS system works. So uh, we have probe here which uploads or sorry is connected by cable to the DTU or data transmission unit. Uh, there's then a modem inside of there which sends the data up to uh, through the mobile network to a, um, a mobile uh, service provider's uh, server. So they actually have a, a computer server there which um, turns uh, that into an internet connection and allows the probe to connect through there, uh, through the internet, to the FTP server. So once it's on the FTP server, the readings will stay there. And then um, anyone who's got Iramax on their computer and the internet connected can then uh, download the readings from the server onto their hard drive of their computer or onto a server computer. Um, whichever they need. Uh, the uh, FTP server can actually also be located in the office on your uh, internal network, so then it cuts out the internet step in the downloading, um, but it's more common to need to go through the internet to download as well. Okay, so the three main components needed to uh, get a plus system up and going are the hardware, the internet access, so looking at things like SIM card, mobile reception, uh, making sure your service provider can give you internet access, and then also uh, you need an FTP host server. So we'll go into each of those three components in a bit more depth uh, now. Uh, looking at hardware component first, so we'll need a probe and sensors. So the uh, probe uh, is the same as any other probe, uh, same as Solo, same as SDR12 probe, uh, any of the other ones, the normal RT6 probe. Um, the main difference is the interface at the top. Uh, so that interface uh, speaks RS232 through the top port to the DTU. Uh, but that RS232 interface could also be a solo interface that you do a firmware upgrade on. Um, so uh, looking at the example below, you can see that uh, this probe starts out here. It's an easy egg. It starts out with a, a solo head unit. And then by putting the uh, next G, oh, sorry, not the, sorry, putting the uh, Viruscan Plus DTU on, it's turned into a plus, uh, and also uh, here the computer is used to reprogram the interface, uh, put new firmware on there, put all the settings in, and then it turns it into a plus. Um, 
Now you see up here we mention uh, GPRS and NextG. Uh, GPRS is pretty much worldwide now. Uh, NextG is still only really used in Australia. It's uh, actually uh, just something that one of our service providers over here uses. Um, it's 850 megahertz uh, band 3G, uh, which isn't really used in any other countries at the moment. So when you're ordering your systems, just remember you only need the GPRS ones and the interface should come programmed as GPRS. So looking more in depth into the hardware, um, the DTU, uh, you can also select GPRS or NextG, so that's just deciding which modem you have connected to it. Um, the antenna can have 3 dB or 7 dB, so the 7 dB generally is going to be better, a uh, higher gain, uh, you can go further distances, uh, more remote areas, but uh, there has been the occasional case where the 3 dB antenna has worked out better. Um, we found uh, when we were really close to a mobile tower with a few units we were doing trials with, they actually um, performed better on the 3 dB just because they were so close that um, the 7 dB was just too much. Uh, you also need a solar panel. Um, usually, uh, well, most people will buy that uh, from Centec. Uh, they'll buy this complete kit here, uh, which has a solar panel in it. But uh, you can also source them locally and save a bit on freight. Um, uh, you also need a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. Uh, they uh, should last a long time when you've got the solar panel on there as well, but even without the solar panel, uh, some distributors have found they last around two months anyway. Um, and then also you'll need a, uh, some way of mounting the, the DTU up out of the, the crop of whatever you've put it in. So um, we suggest uh, we have our own pole, but obviously you're not going to want to ship that overseas, so you can usually find something at the local hardware store. Okay, uh, moving away from hardware, the other uh, one of the other aspects is internet ac access. So for internet access, you need an active SIM card with a small data allowance. Uh, usually five megabytes is uh, plenty, unless you're uploading really frequently. Um, your SIM card doesn't need to have a voice plan, so. Uh, when you go in and get a SIM for your normal phone, they usually ask you if you want $150 worth of calls or something like that. But you don't need any calls. The, the modem only makes connections to the internet. Uh, so you need a data allowance just like you would to access the internet on your mobile phone. You also need adequate phone coverage. So there's a few different ways of working that out. Uh, I've put in here an example of uh, AT&T in the US, so they have coverage maps on the internet that you can look at. Um, I find them uh, to be useful to give you a general idea, but uh, when it comes to uh, really site specific, when you need to know exactly whether you're going to get uh, service or not, um, it's probably not the best. Uh, so you also need a bit of local knowledge. Uh, usually the pe person on the farm or uh, on the property where you're going to install the probe Will know, have a fair idea of what uh, service providers work the best. And then uh, the last one, which um, you should really do if you're going to um, sell a system, is do a field test. Use the same antenna, uh, the same service provider, the like same SIM card as what you're going to use. And if you need any more information about choosing your SIM, uh, just have a look in the Enviroscan Plus hardware manual. All right, so the FTP host server uh, is the uh, third component needed. So FTP, for those not familiar with it, is file transfer protocol. Uh, so uh, it's just like HTTP, and uh, FTP put simply, or FTP server put simply, is a computer which can be accessed via the internet and is running FTP software. So. Um, an example uh, is a, a server computer can run 
FTP or HTTP software. Our probe needs FTP, um, but traditionally uh, most uh, internet servers you see will be running HTTP to run like your business's web page and that sort of thing. Uh, you see when you use a web browser, uh, it's usually got HTTP and then www. Um, so the probe is an FTP client to an FTP server, just like your web browser is a HTTP client to a HTTP server. So basically the probe is the client and then you've got the server which it's uh, sort of um, connecting to. Uh, some examples of uh, some FTP host servers you can use, uh, uh, Total Choice Hosting and OLM. Um, they're both of those uh, Centec has used before, and um, but you can also uh, have your own computer where you um, run FTP software and host it yourself, uh, but uh, these ones are generally easier they usually do the um, backing up and making sure that the, uh, the data is always going to be, be there to use and uh, making sure you're not going to lose any data, uh, making sure you've got power backups, all that sort of thing. Uh, they do all that for you. And uh, the price varies. It's usually fairly cheap if you're on a shared machine, like you share it with other people, or you have your own IP address and um, domain name but uh, you can also pay more and get your own dedicated machine. Uh, if you want more information about FTP in general, you, know, you can look at this Wikipedia page here, or you can search FTP and HTTP on the internet. You usually get a few uh, results for that. And also, if you're trying to choose a host server, if you're just starting up with Plus, or you're trying to suggest one for a customer, uh, Refer to the Zentac Plus manual, it's got um, a bit of information about how to choose there. Okay, so um, now we'll get into setting up a Plus system. So to create an FTP account and a directory, um, oh, sorry, create one, uh, then create some subdirectories under it. So in this example, you can see here, this is the user, so you're, you type in your uh, server address, something like viruscanplus.com, uh, then you'll ask for a username, and you enter your username and your password, and it'll take you to this directory. Uh, then uh, what we suggest is trying to organize your files in some way that's logical, so you might have location one or farm one or you know something uh, to do with the customer name or area. And then the next level down, uh, you, you might uh, so you might have multiple probes at that location. You put in there probe one. Sorry, that yellow is not very good. So uh, that folder there is probe one. So it's just a way of keeping things organised, uh, making sure you don't get too many files in one directory, because we found, uh, especially with Total Choice Hosting uh, and a lot of other uh, hosting companies that have uh, file limits where if you get more than 2,000 files in the one directory uh, you can uh, start not showing the latest ones. Uh, the next step after you've set up your FTP account is to purchase a SIM card. So um, we've sort of talked about it a bit about which SIM cards to get, what you need on them. Uh, assemble the probe and DTU, do that in your workshop. Um, you don't really want to be doing that out in the field, it'll take twice as long and you'll find you don't have parts and don't have tools uh, when you need them. So have it all set up uh, back in your office if it's possible. Um, you can see a good picture there in Arizona, we were building some probes up in a uh, new distributor's garage. Um, down the bottom there, you can see you got a DTU and probe and then uh, Got all the DTUs I've already made and tested sitting up there on the wall. So uh, once you've built up the DTU and the probe, uh, you need to configure them. So uh, we've this one here, this example, uh, we've already connected to the probe. Uh, that's why it says disconnect there now. Um, just using pconfig, uh, do auto detect sensors, get them set up. Uh, this is all just normal, same as any other uh, probe. 
Uh, again, normalising the probe, same as we would with any other probe. Uh, you can see here that we've got the moisture sensors, or the moisture part of the tri-scan sensor, and then the uh, the VIC, volumetric iron content. So that's uh, uh, five tri-scan sensors on that probe by the look of it. And also something to remember there, uh, just sort of going off the side track a bit, uh, the top five sensors, you'll put the depth in for them, and then the, the next five will be uh, automatically inserted after you write to probe. That's just because tri-scan sensor, it is just one sensor. One and 65 are the same sensor, so there's no point entering it twice. The next step is to set the clock. Uh, easiest way is just to synchronize with your computer. Uh, always remember to do that. Uh, it's actually pretty common for people to forget that step uh, when they're first setting up a plus system and then you get back and uh, the data is back in year 2000 and it doesn't make much sense. And then as you're doing each page, uh, just remember to click right to probe. Okay, so now we've moved from clock across the plus solo page. Uh, you enter your logger ID at the top there. Uh, once you've done that, uh, the next bit is to uh, also set your sample count. So we've got that at 12, so it's saying that it's going to upload readings, 12, 12 readings to the server every six hours. And then your destination URL. So the destination URL, uh, all the information for that comes from your, uh, when you set up the FTP account, the first step. That's why it's important to do that first. Um, otherwise it can seem a bit confusing. So if we... Uh, click on the edit button, brings up this screen which makes it a bit easier. Uh, we've got server address, so address.com is the address of the server, so that's the computer. With the dom its domain name is address.com. Uh, the path, so we looked before we had location 01 slash probe 01, uh, now we've just got slash path as an example. Uh, username and password, and if you look uh, at the destination URL field, uh, you can actually see how the uh, each bit relates. So, use red a bit easier. So, if you can see username comes to over here, password comes into here, and that's just standard uh, FTP protocol. Okay, so the Next step, move across to the network tab. Now you need to make sure that the uh, network tab has always got the right settings in it for your modem. Uh, some people will find that uh, they have specific settings they need. They might need to add a bit of extra timeout in there um, because it takes longer in their area for the uh, modem to pick up the network. But the uh, main thing is that you always um, keep uh, the network files handy uh, we have them on our website, but um, if you download them, they're the standard ones that we recommend. Uh, they'll work in most cases. And just make sure that you match them to the type of modem that you've got. So again, remembering whether it's Wavecom, GPRS, or ATM NextG. So once you've uh, done all the configuration, uh, you can move across to the modem tab and then run a test. And the thing we need to make sure when you're running the test is that you get the success. And then if you get that 040 success, you know that it's all worked, all the other details you put in are correct, and it uh, should be right to put out in the field. But uh, So you test each probe individually. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use the same DTU to test each probe or you use um, the one that it's actually going to go with in the field. Uh, it shouldn't matter. Uh, test each DTU with the SIM card and antenna that's going to be used out in the field. Um, and again, you can just use the one probe to test all the DTUs. And then uh, make sure you can connect 
through the TTL port on the, oh, sorry, when you're running these tests, you should connect through the TTL port on the interface. Because uh, if you try and connect through the front panel of the DTU, you won't be able to use the modem uh, to do an upload. And if you do want to talk to the modem, if you want to do signal strength checks like we were talking about before when you're checking if you're going to have internet access, hit this open session uh, and then you can type in up here AT plus CSQ and you hit send and then that'll come up down in this modem response field here. Uh, it should come up with OK and a value. OK, so once you've done uh, everything in the office and you've tested it and you know it all works, uh, you can take it all out into the field and install it. So make sure you've got the solar panel facing the correct direction. So if we look here, I think this nice picture is from California. So the uh, sun is in the south and you can see the solar panel is facing that way. Um, make sure you got your sample interval and sample count set correctly. Uh, this actual probe, uh, I installed it myself and left it sampling uh, every, uh, I think it was sampling every 10 minutes and uploading every time and I found that it was just too often and uh, we're having, um, we're starting to go over our uh, limit of um, the SIM card, and how many megabytes we could use per month. Uh, so you also need to make sure you've got good signal strength once you've got it all set up and got your antenna connected. So make sure you do that AT plus CSQ check in uh, pconfig again. Uh, tighten up all the nuts and bolts, like the solar panel bracket and everything like that. Uh, you don't want it spinning around when people try to take it out of the ground or anything. Uh, leave the cables tidy. So that's actually fairly important with the Enviroscan Plus. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, you don't want machines getting caught on the probe cable or the solar panel cable uh, and animals chewing on it, which tends to happen if it's hanging loosely. And also you don't want the probe cable to be near the antenna cable, so it's important to keep them apart, otherwise you can uh, get interference between them. They basically act as antennas, the cables, and uh, if, they're, if the probe and antenna cable are close to each other, then uh, a lot of the time they'll interfere and you'll get timeouts when you're trying to uh, talk to the probe or the probe's trying to do an upload. Uh, make sure all possible measures are taken to prevent moisture intrusion. Uh, put silicon under the top cap, uh, around the cable gland. Um, remember that uh, water can come through the cable if there's any breaks in the cable or joins. Uh, silicon over that. Um, uh, check things regularly. Uh, an easy egg always replace the gaskets on the lid. Uh, in this picture, someone's filling up the, the uh, sort of cable well there with silicon. It's not something that I would probably do myself, but it's one way of keeping it out. I'd rather put the silicon on the outside, uh, sort of on the cable gland here. And then uh, the last step, where should be the last step when you're uh, setting up a plus system out in the field, is to do it successful test upload uh, via the TTL port, so that there is your TTL. And just a side note on setting up the systems, uh, DTUs are tested in Australia on the Telstra phone network, so um, people who are already getting plus systems will already know that uh, they need to change some settings in the modems when they receive them. Um, so there's two settings and it depends on what uh, phone carrier you go with. So uh, anything other than Telstra, even people in Australia need to change it if they're not using Telstra. Uh, so the first one is the APN that's set in the modem. So the APN is um, Basically, telling the probe, uh, or sorry, telling the modem where uh, or which internet carrier to go with. So, in Australia, it would be Telstra.internet, um, but 
if you're unsure of what you need, then you can look it up at this website. It's usually got a good list there for every country. And the frequency bands, so in Australia I think we use 900 slash 1800 megahertz. Uh, it'll be different in some other countries. I think most of Europe is the same, so they can leave that uh, setting at 5, so the band is 5. And uh, just uh, when you do enter it, you don't need to put in those arrow brackets. Um, so uh, if you're unsure whether you've got the right frequency in the modem, uh, you can check at this website here. Uh, if you want any more information about those modem commands or what they mean, then uh, also have a look uh, down near the end of the uh, PLUS hardware manual. Okay, so moving on to downloading. Once you've got it all installed in the field and it's uploading, uh, you need to download the data. So if you go to uh, one of the uh, your customer's computer or you want to set it up in your office first, whatever, uh, first thing you need to do in Data Exchange is set up the server details. Uh, and you use the same details that went into the probe uh, when you're setting that up to upload. So, um, I just see Parlo's just asked if we can download the um, presentation at the end. Yeah, I'll put it up so everyone can download it. I'll leave it up there for about 10 minutes at the end. And it's also being recorded, so uh, hopefully we go well and everything goes smoothly and then uh, we might even be able to give people the, the audio as well. So uh, we just mentioned setting up the server. Uh, so in Data Exchange, go to the Edit Servers bit here, and that brings up this screen, the Edit Servers. And basically, all those details need to come across from pconfig. So when you set up your FTP server, uh, or your FTP account at the start, uh, you should have all those details still. Uh, all those details uh, in the probe are the same as what goes into the server settings. So you can see the server address, the path, user, and password, all the same. It'll come into here. Um, and uh, one thing I uh, should have mentioned uh, when you're in the field, once you've got your probe completely set up, if you do a backup, and save those settings on your computer, um, you can, you've can you sort of got a permanent record of all of those settings. They'll be saved in a, a .cfg file, and you can open that in Notepad or any text viewer and actually get those the password and everything out if you uh, forget what it is. So in Data Exchange, the other options you've got are HTTP or FTP. So your server might be running FTP uh, software so that you can upload from the probe but it might also have HTTP software so that you can uh, access it without a password maybe or um, yeah, it's just uh, probably the main advantage of HTTP is that it's a bit quicker because it doesn't have to do the back and forth and the checking to make sure uh, that the right user is using it and that sort of thing. Um, something that you only be able to do if you've got uh, the FTP uh, details in there is remove expired files, so that's a good way of managing, making sure you don't get too many files stored on on your server. Um, we uh, it's default to 90 days, but you can usually set it um, a bit less than that because once the files are on your computer, then they don't need to be backed up on the server. Um, but it is sort of a bit of uh, security, a bit of insurance that they're up there as well. So once you've uh, got the server set up, in, uh, you go back to the data exchange screen and you'll see that uh, that server name will be in here. Uh, you now uh, hit get list in the logger ID field and it, that should bring up Centec, so that is the logger ID and then uh, enter in the destination file name. Oh, so, so 
the destination path is this first bit, so it's on the C drive of your computer in the Centec data folder. And then in this case, we've actually named the file Centec01.sdb. And then when you hit the start button down the bottom, that will actually create that Centec01 SDB. And then any time you download after that, it will just update that same SDB uh, so long as you keep the same details in the file name section there. Uh, this can also be run from a batch file, which uh, we'll probably go into in uh, one of the Iramax trainings. It's a bit more of a software feature. Uh, batch file just means that you can um, set it up so it's just a double click and you can download uh, as many probes as you want in the just one file. But uh, you still need to do the setting up of the, the edit servers bit. Okay, so I think the, the next slide is... Uh, hang on, we'll just go to it. Yeah. So the next slide is uh, viewing the uh, FTP files. So if you want to do that, uh, use this server files button here, and then that will take you to the next screen where it shows you uh, all of the files that are in that directory that you've got set up in your server. So looking at the first part of this file here, so it's a, an ESP file, so that's uh, got actual data in it, it's from an upload. The first part is Centec test, that would have been the logger ID of the probe that uploaded that, uh, and then there's some alphanumeric uh, code there, that's just um, from the interface. Uh, you'll see that they're sort of in order, DEF, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If they're out of order, then you can see that it's come from a different probe. Um, then the next bit is the date, so it's the sixth day of the eighth month of the ninth year, or 2009. Uh, then the next bit is the time, so that's 2.45 p.m. on the sixth of the eighth of the ninth. Uh, down the bottom there, uh, you can see uh, from the same probe, Centec, oh sorry, it's from a different probe, it's Centec, and then it's got the date and the time, and it's a text file, so that's from doing a test upload, so when you um, we're testing to see if the system works, that's the type of file it'll upload, and you can actually just open that text file, it'll probably open up in Notepad, and uh, you'll be able to see the signal strength, battery voltage of the unit, and uh, also the last response to show whether it was a success or if there's a failure, why there was a failure. Okay, now some basic fault finding measures. Uh, make sure you use your multimeter as much as possible. Measure the voltages on the battery, uh, connection terminals and the fuses. Um, so in this picture here, you can see that uh, we've got uh, the black probe of the multimeter or the ground on the battery ground. Uh, we keep that there. Uh, you then go around, um, measure the battery voltage, compare that to both sides of the fuse. Um, should have the battery voltage there when you're doing an open session up the top. So that's power to the modem. It's only when it's doing a test or open session. Uh, that's the modem fuse. I think that should always have power at both ends. Um, and that's how you test a fuse properly. Um, just looking at it or um, taking it out and measuring it sometimes isn't enough. You actually need to know that you're getting the full voltage through there, so I test it at both ends. Um, uh, you can also test to see whether there's voltage going to the probe at the point there. Um, and then uh, these points in the pink they're all solar panel voltages, so that should all be the same voltage, whatever's coming from the solar panel. And you could just use the same ground there, because uh, it's all common ground. Uh, if you've got uh, some sort of problem uh, when you're going out into the field, make sure you look at your graphs first. Uh, try and download it. Get an idea, was there a problem there, sort of happening over a couple of days before it went offline, or... Um, 
uh, try and get an idea before you go out in the field. And the, the most important thing with fault finding is trying to isolate the cause of the problem. So it's no good just saying, oh, the probe's not working, it's not uploading. You really need to find out uh, a bit more detail. Is there power at the probe? So uh, I showed you before uh, where to um, measure that. Uh, and also you've got to measure it at the probe end to make sure the cable's okay. Um, is there power at the modem when you're trying to do a test or an open session? Uh, does the probe talk to the modem if it is getting powered up? Uh, you can just send a simple command like AT in open session and it should come back with OK to test that. Um, so you need, to, yeah, like I said, make sure that you are getting power there, the modem, make sure you can send commands. And there should only be power uh, when you're trying to do an open session or a test. Uh, another tip is just to keep a spare SIM card in your, your toolkit. Uh, that's always a good idea. Um, they're not that expensive uh, compared to some other tools uh, and it can save you a lot of time when a, a SIM card goes wrong there's not much you can do about it out in the field um, so still looking at the fault finding um, just be wary that swapping components can sometimes cause uh, confusion uh, if you've got mismatch of settings or if you're changing more things the, uh, more than one thing at a time. Um, just make sure that uh, uh, you're trying to just change one thing at a time, keep track of it, um, don't confuse the situation anymore. Um, make sure you've always got the correct network settings in pconfig uh, on the probe. Um, so make sure that you've always got the uh, network settings saved on your computer. And uh, not very straight highlighting there, but um, yeah, so those files, like I said before, are on our website. Or um, if we've helped you develop your own, then make sure you've always got them on your computer when you're out in the field. And remember to check the simple things first, because uh, the majority of the problems I deal with uh, daily in tech support and other people deal with are just simple things like bad wiring or loose connections. Um, and things that uh, are easy to overlook. I've do it, done it before myself, um, having a pin on the SIM card without checking that, and, uh, yeah, just those sorts of things. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. Everyone will be happy to hear that. Uh, FTP account setup is the first step, so just summarising it a bit uh, that we looked at setting up the FTP account. Uh, once you've done that, you go and get your SIM card, get that ready, assemble the probe and DTU in your workshop or in your office, configure the probe uh, once it's powered up and all connected, um, take it out into the field, install it, step five, test it out there, make sure it's working. Uh, you don't want to drive away saying, oh, I think it worked because it worked in the shop, but uh, make sure you know that it's working. And then uh, once you know that some readings have been uploaded, uh, go back to the computer and uh, download some readings onto your computer. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, the path, goes probe, readings, through the DTU, up to, through the network, internet, all going that way. And then uh, there's a transfer of data between the computer and the FTP server. Okay, so as a follow-up to this meeting, uh, we were going to be sending out a test to everyone that's uh, been a part of it. So the test will be based on what's been covered and also what's in the uh, hardware manual and sort of what we've talked about. So. Uh, the test is optional, you don't have to do it, but uh, for those who do do it and show they understand uh, the concept of PLUS and how it works, uh, then we'll um, print out some certificates and send them out to people or email them, um, just so you can say uh, you have done the Centec training and um, you're up to speed on this. Thanks for joining in, Paolo. Thanks, everyone, for being a part of it. It's uh, a new thing for Centec, this, so... Uh, it's good to have uh, a few people from Europe joining in and um, hopefully uh, we can sort of 
uh, make our, our distance a bit smaller by uh, using the web conferencing um, when we can't uh, travel as often. If you've got any feedback about the presentation, then you can send that through to me at Tech Support or Susie. I'm happy to hear anything you've got to say.